Today in Matt's class, we are gonna go over a brand new charcoal technique called the erase out technique. All right, so this is a brand new technique that we are gonna do with charcoal. And a lot of what we're gonna be doing is kind of the opposite of drawing with a pencil. We are gonna be drawing with the eraser. We're gonna be erasing out the light. So the first thing we need to do, instead of starting with a relatively white sheet of paper or a light sheet of paper that we're drawing dark, we need to make this dark and then we are gonna erase out of the shadows. So the first thing we need to do, we need to get a nice charcoal tone down. We need to get it as large as we can covering our newspaper print real estate, but also we need it to be even in tone and we need it to be dark, dark, dark. The darker you can get it, the more variety of light that you can erase back out of it. So what I am going to start with, I am going to use my piece of compressed charcoal and I'm going to charcoal up everywhere. And I like to go in uh, a single direction. That way, even once I smooth this out, if you kind of just go crazy all over the place, it just um, it starts feeling not as atmospheric. Now, before I blow all of this excess charcoal dust that's all over the place, I kind of want to keep it on there because once I press into this with my either a chamois or with my paper towel, it's going to press some of that dust right back into it. Get it nice and dark and as even as I can, even at this stage. Looks pretty good. And then I want to use a paper towel, which I got one right here. And I'm going to start pushing this in. Again, I'm still kind of going in the same direction so that it kind of has a unified tone to it all, as dark as I can. Now, one of the reasons why in past videos I talked about how to hold your pencil and that you don't want to lean on your drawing, one of the reasons why is if, if you start doing that with this, you're gonna start erasing and lifting up the charcoal. So you definitely wanna be holding your pencil or any tool that you're using the correct way where you're drawing with your arm and not leaning on your arm, pressing your wrist against the surface like you do with something like arithmetic. Push this around one last time, just a little bit more. Does it typically get darker than that or is that? It depends on what you use and what you do. I'm actually gonna, I think I'm gonna try breaking out the big guns. And I'm gonna use this to really get this nice and dark. So this should get it even darker. Very nice. Not a ton darker, but darker nonetheless. Now here's the deal. Uh, we get to put in a basic layout with charcoal pencil, but you don't want to draw everything and you don't want to do any shading. You're just doing kind of a quick gesture and mapping out just a couple features you don't want to do anything crazier than that because all of the drawing is going to be with your eraser. And once you start drawing with the eraser, there is no going back in with charcoal. In order to make this technique really look cool, you only want to erase out the light. You don't want to go back in and add in additional darks. So now I've got my charcoal pencil. So I am going to draw this face here. So I'm going to do just kind of a quick layout and I can barely see my pencil and that's okay. I don't want to see too much.
I'm not really doing any kind of shading. barely see what I'm drawing in here and that's okay I don't want to really see a whole lot I just want to get my basic proportion in here so shadow here here a pit of the neck Something like that, just some basic. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, I am gonna start erasing, and I am going to begin with my Mars white plastic eraser. This is gonna get some really nice hard edges that I'm going to erase out. So what I'm gonna do, I am going to slice off a thin piece of cheese here. See how nice and white that is, really bright. It's gonna help erase out some light. I am going to start erasing out some edges. Now what I wanna be careful of, I really need to look more than ever before. I'm drawing with my arm. I, this is not a situation where you can lean on your hand. You definitely have to draw with your arm. But I'm also gonna pay attention to hard edges and soft edges. So if you look at an area like the chin here, you can see it's definitely a hard edge on the outside of her chin, the darkness in the background against the light area of her chin, but then the chin rolls into shadow softly. So it's a hard edge against a soft edge. So you really need to be aware of these scenarios. All right, here we go. I'm erasing out the light here. And then I've got this area where there's this hair kind of comes across. There's the eyebrow. And then this whole area of the forehead is just light. Gonna erase out the forehead. but then also the nose rolls into shadow over on the side. A little bit of light under the brow here. You want to be careful because if you erase too much, there's no going back in to fix it. It'll foil the technique.
So the cool thing I like about this technique is when all is said and done, it kind of gives the illusion of a smoky photograph. Part of it is because all of your shadows kind of go back into the same amount of darkness. And because you're not going back in and making certain areas darker, it's just got this cool timeless texture where it just looks like an old vintage photograph. And it's just got a really killer look to it. So this is kind of step one. So now I'm going to go a little bit softer and I'm going to use my kneaded eraser. Try to soften some of these a little bit and also chisel with it, but just get just a little more clarity. Plus the uh, that Mars plastic eraser does get loaded up sometimes, but better to load up your Mars plastic eraser than to load up your kneaded eraser. But now with the kneaded eraser, I can kind of erase out just a little bit more. Does the kneaded eraser simply not get cleaned every time you stretch it out? It does, but I mean, it, there is such a thing as too much where it just gets super loaded and then you have to play with it for a long time for it to kind of work itself out. This technique is really hard to do for faces, but it does have a cool look, and if you get it right, it does add a really cool three-dimensional look. This technique is awesome, though, for fabric and drawing clothes and folds in fabric. It really has a, a killer effect for that. All right, so it's a little bit closer, and I can go even closer still and I can hammer out details with like this little pen eraser and really chisel out details.
highlights, rips. And I want to rest my hand on this so bad, but like I have to hold it up. Gotta do it. So there you go. So the technique, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. It definitely has a cool look to it. And it definitely is a really great way. You'll probably notice that um, it has a really cool 3D effect that kind of starts happening. And uh, I find that a lot of students love it, even though it's, it's not always perfect in what you wanted, it will wield some results that are really cool. And one of the great things about it, it forces you, again, you're, the fact that you're drawing with light instead of drawing with shadow, which is what you've probably been doing since you were in kindergarten, it is forcing you to look at things differently and to break out of your comfort zone, how you normally draw and shade things. And it's like you're drawing and shading for the first time. Imagine knowing everything you know about drawing, but you've never drawn before. Imagine how you would impress people with, oh my gosh, you've never drawn before. It's kind of what you're doing but you've never done this technique. You've never really thought about drawing with light instead of drawing with shadow. And because you're really forcing yourself to see things a different way, if you're opening up your mind and students just really, really love this technique and what they're able to do with it. Again, what you're not allowed to do, a lot of students see something like this and they say, oh, I just wanna go in, okay, I wanna make this a little darker, or I raised too much over here, let me just put that back in. No, you're not allowed to. If you make a mistake, you made a mistake. You will foil the technique if you go back in and try to fix it. And I'll be able to tell right away, it's gonna foil everything, don't do it. You know what it means? It just means next time you do the technique, slow down and erase one little bit at a time. This is an area where, you know how I talk about when you're drawing with pencil, you don't wanna scratch your way to a better future and just go in and haphazardly do things. How you wanna think about each line, you wanna see it, you wanna put that mark down and make each line count. Same is true for erasing. This isn't a technique where you can just, oh, I'll erase around a little right here, and I'll erase a little over here, map this out with my eraser here. You can't do that. You have to be very calculated, take a look at what you have, one step at a time, make it count. All right, that is the technique. Did you enjoy class today? If so, give me a like. If there's something you'd like to see me cover in a future video, let me know what that is in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I've also got a video series called Sketchbook Challenge that helps your drawing, creativity, and fill up an awesome looking sketchbook. Plus, there are videos on You Can Draw Star Wars, Hollywood is Dead, and sneak peeks at the Aladdin 3477 Motion Picture Trilogy. In order to not miss any new videos, hit that notification bell. Sharing is caring, and it's great to inspire your friends. Share this video on social media, and your friends will share awesome art tips they find with you. If you're on Instagram, you can follow me at Matt underscore Bush underscore Instagram. I'll see you back in the classroom soon. Don't be tardy.